You are a unique individual, just like everyone else. Wait, what? Hey everyone, welcome back to Bear It In Mind. This video is part of the issues and debates topic in psychology. In this video, we're exploring the ideographic and nomothetic debate. This debate is about what is the best way to investigate human behavior. Should we focus on how people are unique or should we focus on how we are similar? What does the word idios mean? Well, idios comes from the Greek for private or personal. An ideographic approach takes the view that everyone is unique and therefore should be studied as an individual in order to capture the richness of human individuality. It is not interested in looking for how we're all the same and so does not aim to produce general laws of behaviour. Well, what does the word nomo mean? Well, nomo comes from the Greek word for law. The main aim of the nomothetic approach is to produce general laws of human behaviour. These provide a standard or benchmark against which people can be compared, classified and measured. It involves studying large numbers of people and trying to understand why they behave in similar ways in certain situations. These similarities lead to laws that govern behaviour that can be generalised to large populations of people. Now, very importantly, the difference between ideographic and nomothetic approaches is not just a question of whether the psychologist wants to study the unique individual or look for ways for how we are similar, but also of the research methods used to investigate human behaviour. This is reflected in how an ideographic approach with its focus on the individual gathers qualitative data. This is data that is non-numerical, descriptive and language-based and is focused on measuring the quality of something rather than the quantity. This type of data is gathered through research methods such as case studies, which are an in-depth analysis of an individual, diaries and journal records, as well as self-report measures such as questionnaires and unstructured interviews. This gathering of qualitative data puts the focus on the richness of human experience, gaining insight into the behaviour of an individual person. In contrast, a nomothetic approach gathers quantitative data this is data that is numerical, countable, and is focused on measuring quantity rather than quality. This type of data is gathered through research methods such as experiments, correlations, meta-analysis and observations that can be objectively analysed and involve studying a large sample of participants. To see the difference between ideographic and nomothetic approaches, consider the contrast between behaviourist and humanistic psychologists. Behaviourism is nomothetic in that they produce general laws of behaviour that apply to everyone. For example, part of operant conditioning involves positive reinforcement, which states that if a behaviour is followed by a reward, that behaviour is more likely to be repeated, a general law that applies to everyone. This nomothetic approach is also seen in the research methods that they use. For example, behaviourist B.F. Skinner studied rats in the highly controlled environment of what was called the Skinner box. This allowed him to carefully control and manipulate different variables and measure their behaviour. This enabled him to gather quantitative data such as the number of times the rat pressed the lever and the time taken to press the lever. In contrast, humanistic psychology reflects an ideographic approach. Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow were humanistic psychologists that rejected the ideas of behaviourism as they were interested in our unique subjective experiences and not in how we are all the same. They wanted to document the conscious experience of the individual or self, often using unstructured interviews, gathering qualitative data about people's experiences and thoughts. For more on the approaches, I've put a link in the description to where you can download a free copy of a resource that compares the approaches and relates them to all the debates with examples. We can now be more specific with the nomothetic approach and consider three types of general laws. Number one, 
classifying people into groups. A general law that is applied to everyone that classifies people into groups can be seen in attachment. Mary Ainsworth created the strained situation as a measurement of attachment which classified people as either secure, insecure avoidant or insecure resistant. Number two, principles of behavior that can be applied to people in general. For example, consider research into why people obey authority figures. A principle of behavior applied to everyone in general would be Milgram's research, which proposes that people are more likely to obey an authority figure if they are wearing a uniform in a more prestigious location and are in closer proximity. Number three, establishing dimensions on which people can be placed and compared. For example, in forensic psychology, Hans Eisenk created the criminal personality, in which there were the dimensions of introvert and extrovert and neurotic and stable, dimensions upon which people could be measured and placed. A general law applied to everyone where if you were high in extroversion and high in neuroticism, as well as psychoticism, you were more likely to be criminal. Another example of dimensions in psychology can be seen in relation to locus of control with the ends of the dimension being internal or external. Now just before we go on to critically consider the ideographic and nomothetic approaches, here's an exam question that was previously asked that helpfully illustrates everything we've covered so far and will help consolidate what we've learned. It said, a prison psychologist used an ideographic approach to study offending. Well, okay, as we read the rest of the question, look out for all the references to an ideographic approach. Can you spot them? He asked two offenders to record their thoughts about their childhood and their offending behaviour in a journal over a period of four weeks. Qualitative analysis of the journals show that the offenders often thought about sad childhood events and believed that their childhood experiences had influenced their offending. Findings from ideographic research, like the study described above, are often used as a basis for other investigations. So what did you see that was ideographic? Well, there were two offenders, they were unique individuals, and they were a small sample that cannot be generalised. And they gathered qualitative data, looking at the thoughts of the offenders, in their journals. Now for the exam question. Explain how the researcher might develop the above investigation through taking a nomothetic approach. Six marks. Have a think. How could you change this study so that it now reflected a nomothetic approach? Well, rather than having two offenders, you could have a larger sample, and this sample should be representative of the larger prison population. This would help make generalizations. Quantitative methods could be used instead of the journal data, such as structured interviews or standardized questionnaires with closed questions that produce large amounts of quantitative data, which all of the sample would complete. This data could then be statistically analysed to test for a significant difference and then generalise the findings to the wider prison population. So in this debate, which one is better? Should we adopt an ideographic approach or a nomothetic approach? Some argue that an ideographic approach is better for the following three reasons. Number one, it provides a more complete understanding of the individual. This is because a nomothetic approach cannot find out rich, in-depth information about single cases. An ideographic approach, on the other hand, uses qualitative measures which provide more insight into a person's behaviour and it provides more meaningful information. Number two, avoids problems with cultural bias. Because the nomothetic approach is trying to make general laws and investigate how we are similar, this can lead to universal laws of behaviour, which means that behaviour is assumed to be the same everywhere in the world, including across different cultures. This can lead to, and has led to, cultural bias, sometimes referred to as ethnocentrism, where one culture's set of norms and behaviours are seen as superior to other cultures, and are used as the standard by which other cultures are judged. Because the ideographic approach does not seek to produce general laws, it avoids this potential problem. And number three, an ideographic approach has the power to challenge a nomothetic theory. This is because unique cases can serve to challenge general laws of behavior. Firstly, the multi-star model proposed a model of memory that contained three stores, a sensory register, a short-term store, and a long-term store. They stated that each store was unitary, a single store. 
However, the case study of KF challenged this. KF suffered a motorbike accident, which led to problems with his short-term memory, where his verbal memory was poor, but his visual short-term memory was fine, which demonstrated that the short-term store is not a single unitary store after all, but made up of other subcomponents, one for visual and one for verbal memory. One individual ideographic case challenged a nomothetic theory. And secondly, there is the research of Kolachova, who studied a pair of identical twin boys who shortly after losing their mother, after they were born, were banished to a basement for five and a half years of their lives. What they were like when they were discovered at age seven and how they went on to develop as adults challenged Bowlby's maternal deprivation theory, an individual case challenging a nomothetic theory. For more on that, you can check the video on that too, also linked below. However, despite these strengths of an ideographic approach, some have argued against an ideographic approach. This is because focusing on the unique individual through the use of qualitative research methods can be very subjective. It requires the interpretation of the information by the researcher, which can be influenced by their own opinion and bias. In other words, it lacks the objectivity that comes with a nomothetic approach. Additionally, one of the strong arguments for adopting a nomothetic approach has come from its practical application. This is because by studying large numbers of people and seeking to create general laws that apply to the wider population, various treatments have been created to help people. For example, one of the explanations for OCD is low serotonin levels in the brain, and as a result, drugs have been developed to affect serotonin levels and treat OCD. So which is it? Idio or nomo? Well, rather than ideographic and nomothetic being contradictory, some have argued that they are in fact complementary. This is because it is possible to consider the same behaviour from both approaches depending on the purpose of the research. For example, if psychologists wanted to study memory, they could adopt a nomothetic approach and use experimental methods to discover general laws. For example, the research of Peterson and Peterson in 1959 investigated the duration of our short-term memory. But this could be complemented by adopting an ideographic approach by studying rare and unusual cases, such as KF, HM and Clive Wearing, which provide rare insight into human memory that would be inaccessible otherwise. These individuals can be studied in depth, providing rich data about human memory. And as we have seen, one individual case can go on to shape a nomothetic theory. In fact, some have pointed out that an ideographic and nomothetic approach are both needed to fulfil the aims of science. If psychology is the scientific study of mind and behaviour, then its aims are to describe behaviour, to understand behaviour, to predict behaviour and to control behaviour. Here we can see that an ideographic approach can achieve these two, whereas a nomothetic approach can achieve the other two complementary rather than contradictory. So that's the ideographic and nomothetic debate. If you're ready to check out the next debate in psychology, you can click on the screen now or in the description below. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you in the next one.